We're back, baby. We are live. I am your personal performance coach, Corey Camp, and today we are talking about how to deal with the haters. We got, we all got them. Trust me, we all got them. The more you do this stuff, I'm sure you got some in your life too. We are bringing in my boy Lane Farmer. He is dropping some knowledge on this topic with y'all. Lane's got some haters in his life. I know he does. Let's see. Where is he at? Is he connected? Dude, there he is. Let me there tell you is. right now, dude. Is anybody ever hated on you in your life so much that you're just like, get the hell out of my way because you're not helping me improve at all? You ever tell someone to get the hell out of your way, bro? <laughs> I love that because, yes, as soon as you say that, I, I have a story that comes to mind. Tell so. me. Yo, starting off right now, we're talking haters. We're talking people that don't help or hate. Negative comments, whatever. Start us off, dude. Get this, right away. It's it's all love to my my Delaware teammates, <laughs> but there was times, man, like when when the whole team practiced together. We're talking eight lanes. You got twenty eight guys, twenty eight girls, crowded pool, right? Yeah, yeah. So you guys usually were lanes one through four. Girls were lanes five through eight, and I. Lane four, man, was like my – that was my practice lane because lane four in swimming, if that's your seed lane, like you're number one. Like that's the <laughs> spot. So, of course, your boy's training in that lane, right? Because – You're the best. Dude. That's where that's where I – but that's where I want to be, right? So, sure. obviously, I'm taking all my reps in that spot. Mm -hmm. And when we had these team practices, we had all these people coming in to my lane and – I quite frankly had sometimes be like, yo, you're getting in my way. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Like if you're not, and they were like, but it's like evenly distributed about, and I'm like, I don't care if, if you're in my lane and you're getting in my way, you move lanes and like, or get out of my way one or the other. And it led to a little like disagreement, some hating sometimes, Ooh. but dude, it's, it's what you got to do to get better sometimes. So yeah, man, That's I what it's hear about. you on that. I hear you on that, dude. There's <laughs> um, it's important to uh, you got me, bro. We here? Are we checking? Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. My first for a second. No, but uh, understanding the hate, man. Um, I like the getting out of the lane phrase. No pun intended, but hey, it works just because that's the way. <laughs> but no, people don't realize that uh, one of the biggest things with dealing with hating comments, negativity, whatever it is. Those people that are the ones that are hating don't realize they're doing it sometimes. Sometimes it comes in different forms. I think one of the easiest ways for me that I've relieved some stress off of myself when it comes to paying attention to that, I know social media is a big thing when it comes to watching everyone else's life. Um, I tell myself these people don't realize what they're doing. You know, they are being naive for whatever reason in their life. Maybe they've got problems they're dealing with. When they come at me and they, they deal hate or they're hating on what I want, a lot of people are like, hey, they, they, they wish they were doing what I'm doing. That's why they're acting out. I just don't think they realize what they're doing. They're always trying. Everyone's got some advice to say, well, I wouldn't really go do that, man. You're probably good. You shouldn't waste money on that or you shouldn't go do this. Like to them, that doesn't seem like hate or a bad comment. They're trying to help and, and give advice. Right. But to me, I'm like, no, I know I'm supposed to be doing that. And I know we'll get to this comment sooner or later, which draws us back to having clarity on everything like every other conversation we've had. Um, it must but, be important. <laughs> <laughs> but it is important to realize, like, uh, what kind of hate are you receiving? There's different versions. It comes with questions. It comes with negative comments. Those are the easiest ones to see. Like someone comments on your photo, like, you suck. That's the easiest version to hate to see. But there's also jealousy. There's also... Uh, like I'm saying, like a teammate situation that really wants to be playing over top of you or whatever it is, uh, another coworker that acts like they're being your friend and they really don't want you to succeed. There's so many different versions of hate out there. It all comes down to, you know, where's my path that I'm trying to succeed on and what's distracting me? Distractions come in forms. Hate's one of those distractions. How do I avoid the hate? How do I get it out of there? realizing that it comes in different forms for me was one of the biggest things for sure. You know what I mean? Dude, that's huge. Um, and you got to kind of just realize where it's coming from, you know, oftentimes for the other person. I mean, in that story that I told a lot of it was even within like at that level of competition, there's still some 
differences of like how bad do you want it among people you know what i mean yeah. and i think i definitely fell in a, a category that was very unique of like i wanted that shit bad i'll be honest like more than a lot of people um even on my own team and sometimes that led to like oh he's just so absorbed in <laughs> his process and you know all the stuff and it was like no man i just i'll do anything to be successful at yeah that swimming so exactly you know realizing when people are making these comments the biggest freeing thing to me was they're probably just saying that because they're not willing to make those sacrifices and willing to make those same like commitments and dedication to the results that i am and that's okay yeah. I'm not going to return it on them in any way. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. I think, uh, and I love what you're saying because that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't hold it against them because technically if I'm playing a sport and this other guy that plays my same position, right? Or if I'm working a job and somebody wants my job, I'm like, bring it on because if he really wants it as bad as I do, I can't hate on him for wanting it and being passionate about the same thing that I'm passionate about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when those when you bump heads with some people sometimes and it seems like it's coming off as hate it could just be their their natural desire that you feel desired about something and you both are trying to succeed at the same thing um and sometimes responding to that version of hate like you can surprise somebody and just be like hey man like i know you just like told me to like f off or something but i actually just appreciate you being passionate about what i'm passionate about i think we're just two alphas in the room trying to like do the same thing and you know what i mean so and like that's what we're saying like understanding where it's coming from that kid could just be a complete jerk or he's he's in the same mindset as you and you guys are just butting heads trying to get the same trophy for the same position um or it's just some person over there that's just like wishing they could be doing what you're doing that you're ambitious and they don't have the ambition and there's a jealousy thing understanding where it's coming from is really big and i can't please everybody right i can't make everyone happy so for me, what's been working the best is I don't hold it against them. I don't judge somebody for being hateful towards me. You can flip it. You can use it. You can, you can help yourself by like, it might be a door, Corey. Like there might be a client that originally didn't like you. And then it opened a door for you to help them because that hate got them in front mm -hmm. of you. They come up to you and go like, dude, why are you always working out? Why are you always doing, why are you always doing live workouts, Corey? And then you can be like, well, because it's been something that's been like amplifying my brain to feel good about myself. And then they go, oh, shit, like, how do you do that? And then you go, welcome to the Corey Performance Center here, baby. It's time to level up. So you can use haters sometimes to like rally in a person to affect in their life, man. Like sometimes those haters are hating because they need help. Yeah, I think it, what's huge there is understanding personally when is it a moment that you tell that person to kick rocks and beat it? Right. And when is it a, when is it a time to be like, wait a second, let's have a conversation. Yes. And I mean, quite frankly, the climate that we're in, in the world right now and our country, a lot of it is people are just aren't open. The hate is so strong that they're not open for that conversation. Right. And if we just were open more to meeting someone and trying to, I'm not even saying compromising on our values and, and learning from them, but just being open to a conversation and hearing that side of things, we would be a much more productive society. Yeah. And that falls into this category too. Like a lot of people hate on other people on this platform because they just, one, they don't understand. There's a lack of understanding behind the intent. And too it's just they're not open for that dialogue to get clarity around the sure. intent why do we do what we do we love what we do because yeah. we want to see other people do better and i hope that shows through in our intent and in our you know our actions as well you know yeah. what i mean yeah we're built we're built off of helping people and people that are in a hateful mindset aren't probably necessarily going through their day going like how can i help the other people around me they're going through the day going like that person i i sh i'm a better person i deserve to have with that why does that person have that the, the way that they think and act and ask questions and not or not interact like you're saying if a lot of people that spent most of the time hating on whatever's going on through the day and feeling like the world's against them 
if they would stop feeling helpless and maybe just went up to the person that they have been making up lies and limiting, you know, I know you're big on limiting beliefs and stuff, right? Like, yeah. I, if I've never talked to Corey before, but I, this whole time I'm going like, Corey's a selfish guy and blah, 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 but I've never spoken to you. <laughs> if I would just go up to you and be like, you know what, let me put this guard down. I've been hating a lot. Corey, how do you do what you do and how, you've been, how have you been successful? You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, bam, doors open. But like you said, people aren't in that understanding that they can ask questions and open that conversation mm -hmm. and when you find out that you know the people that are most successful are, are the most helpful or uh, selfish or not selfish but like uh, selfless in the right way like there's no need for the hate man you don't have to hate on people it's just going to bring you down and, and you know in the process yeah it's so funny like i've heard that before you know definitely i'm sure you have too and like, I just laugh about it now because, I mean, you know me pretty well at this point. Like, I'm the furthest thing from a selfish person. Like, I want to see everyone win. And I'll literally do probably whatever is possible, sometimes to the point where I quite literally stretch myself too thin to help other people, you know, succeed. So it's... Yeah, getting clear on and just getting to know the person, man, goes a long yeah, way. It does. I think this this really goes a lot back to the hate comes, I think, from that comparison, right? And we've talked about this. We actually never actually had a chance to do a live talk on it. I think it was like one of the few Thursdays in the past six months that our schedules didn't align uh, when we talked about comparison versus like construction. And that goes a long way of so much hate, especially on this platform, is probably coming from a root of comparison, which is easy to do, right? Like everybody and their mother is an influencer these days. Like yeah. I, I can scroll down my feed. You know, I, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces on this, in this live. We're in the same space. You and I are in the same space. It could be really, really easy to just look at what any of these people are doing. And they're all doing some fantastic stuff, yeah. mind you. And I can just get depressed. I can be like, dude, I, I can't put out the quality of content that Lane's doing. I know Simone is on here. Like, Sim is crushing it. Caitlin's on here. Like, Caitlin's crushing it. I can look at it that way, right? And I can start hating on them. Or I can look at it like, yo, I'm surrounded by some badass people. I can't wait to do some stuff on their level. And I'm just going to acknowledge them because they're doing some cool stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, exactly. And man, that's what I'm saying. Like how you choose to look at situations and, and talk to yourself, right. Will determine how you view people and what they're doing. And, Oh, that person's a jerk or Hey, that person's doing good stuff and I need some help from them or whatever. Um, and you can also be the person that's like, receiving the hate too and choose to handle that in the situation in one way or the other you can receive hate and i know some people are like get the hell out of my way if you're not a part of me if you're not for me like you suck and get out and you're and you hit it at that good thing like when's the right time to like do that and then when's the right time to try to see if this is a, a possibility where i can have an impact here or learn from it or whatever some people manage it so well that they like like looking at the stuff and then some people, I know you've seen probably a lot of either a celebrity or an athlete that goes, I don't like to read the comments because I don't like to fill my head with people that don't belong mm. in my headspace. Some people like to read them because they like to prove people wrong and they love, they're so confident about who they are. They're like, man, I love looking at people telling me I suck and I'm still like a three-time Super Bowl champion, you know, or something like that. And I think it just like the clarity of who you are and when you're operating based off of like what you find value in yourself, when you know how valuable you are, the hate in this stuff just does not matter ever. It doesn't. I know exactly uh, what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and how I operate and why I'm operating. Anybody can say anything they want to me. And I just know what I'm supposed to be doing, why I've been put here on this earth, what I'm doing it for. You know what I mean? You're a performance coach, mm -hmm. Corey. Let me tell you right now, you're a performance coach. You change people's lives. You know what you're doing every single day, every single week of your life right now. You know why you're impacting people, right? And when someone hates on you and says, Hey, Corey, you're not impacted anyone, bro. You need to dial it back. You're so confident in what you're doing. That comment has no weight to it. You know what I mean? So when you're so in tune with yourself, that's when I'm like, man, I, I, this person's comment 
doesn't matter at all. When we're not in tune with ourselves, when we don't know what we're doing, when we don't know how we're doing it, that's when I think the comments can really start to like sink in and slow us down, you know? Yeah. I think when there's any like any self doubt there or that lack of trusting yourself, whatever you want to call it, when there's that present, those comments just weigh so much heavier than it when you're like super, super firm on it. So yeah, I think like when you're going into the new space, like for people that are trying to use this platform to start making things happen, it's going to happen, right? There's going to be triggering comments that are going to be like, yo, like, dude, who are you? Why are you putting out video? You're not someone who puts out video. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. oh man, I was trying this new thing and that was how it was initially received. But like, keep pushing through that stuff and maybe like talk to that person. Hey, why didn't you like the video? I'm curious. Just, just curious why you didn't like it. Learn from it. And what I've, always learn like you can be really open to having that conversation with someone that comes at you from a negative point and you can hear their point of view and then if it's a lasting thing like if it's continual just hating on you yeah you know, eat it. like i don't need you in my headspace i'm not reading your comments like you're blocked kind of thing sure. um let's see caitlin's question how do you get to that level of confidence in knowing yourself i like it. Oof. I got good one. You want to start with that? Yeah, go dude, I'll go off on it. I think it's like, first off, you just got to look at yourself as an individual. Start with your personality and your characteristics because everything that you do that you feel comfortable with on how you operate out of your personality, you can start to look at how to take that into every avenue that you do. And then that way it's kind of like, you know, if, if I want to show up to a Halloween party wearing a certain costume that I feel represents me or whatever I'm doing, I'm going to feel good about that when I show up to that Halloween costume party but when someone starts telling me what costume i should be wearing and it doesn't it doesn't fit right with actually what i want to do then when i show up to that party i'm going to feel a little insecure about like is this a good costume or whatever no i want to pick the one that i feel good about wearing that i think's funny and show up and i'm gonna have a good time i'm not gonna feel nervous i think that's what we do wrong when it comes to like going through dealing with all the hate and feeling confident is we're trying to wear you know a different outfit of personality or strengths and weaknesses. We don't know what those things are. No wonder we feel less confident going into um, events or competition for athletes, dude. Like, I'm not a fast guy. So if someone's trying to make me be and feel like a fast guy out in the field, I'm not, I know I'm not, and I'm not gonna have confidence. So why would I start acting like I'm a sprinter or a long distance runner? I can run long distance, get better at it, but that's not my main thing you know what i mean when you're not operating out of your main thing i think that's when you really start to try and go down life adjusting everything to fit that that false personality you know what i mean you know what i'm talking about mm. what do you think man hit me with something dude no i i love that i love the costume analogy it's fantastic yeah. stuff man very timely with halloween right hey, around man, the corner you know it kicked in really quick and i was like Let me <laughs> i love it yeah um the best advice my dad ever gave me came at, at 14 years old. I was going into this ju the Junior Olympics, which is like, it sounds like a bigger deal than it is. It's just an age group meet <laughs> down in the area. Every local area has them in the U.S., uh, the USA swimming. So I'm going into this, and the first night um, is the 1,000 freestyle. And what was so mentally – difficult i think from swimming distance and anyone that does anything that is a longer you know like sprints are like this right like it's yeah. more mindset stuff in the preparation rather than in the execution distance stuff baseball games is a long hour of time like and there's breaks in between the thousand the mile were my events what made it difficult was like it was go time for a, such a long period of time and then there's so many factors that I had to manage that were coming up while I'm competing. It was like, what is Lane doing next to me? What is this guy doing next to me? And the best advice my dad gave me was just swim your own race. Just like the race is yours. Go do your thing. And at 14 years old, I was like, well, duh, that makes sense. But that was really the meat for me that really it stuck that it was like, it is my race. And really what, I do like I have complete control over me. I I can't worry about the these 
other seven guys and what they do. Sure. And, you know, I was fortunate that it manifested into probably one of the best at the time. It was my best ever meet. It was a breakthrough meet for me. Nice. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, I swam the mile that, <laughs> that year and a friend of mine never heard of him before that meet. And he just like, now he's a good friend. He just took off. He like was sprinting from like the dive in and it, that can fuck with your head. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. like, Oh my God, I start comparing saying like, I can't hold his pace, but I was like, I'm going to swim my race. And I know my strength is on going to be on the long haul here. That's yeah. I'm not going to win it from the start lap one. I'm going to win it, win it lap 60 through 66 Yes. when I kick it in. And sure enough, that's what happened. Like I brought, I brought him in at the end and, and passed him in one. Definitely. So I think that's where the level of confidence and trust comes from is literally just knowing your game plan, knowing your strengths. And when it comes time to perform, executing on those, when you're talking about practice and all that stuff, yeah, that's when you can focus on these these weaknesses. You can sure. talk about, you know, working on your getting faster, working on your speed. But when it comes time to execution, man, you got your game plan. Just stick to it. Yeah. Well, you adjust, but like, stick to it. You know what works for you. Exactly, and that's I'm I'm glad you brought up that uh, section where you're like you knew how you would race this properly, when to kick it in gear. Because when you know that stuff, and then coming back to our topic about like hate and everything, when you know exactly how you operate, people can feed you whatever you want. But you know deep down around that lap time is when you kick it in. And that's where you get like, you know, that's where you perform. When you know for sure how you operate, it doesn't matter. If this dude's faster than me, he's faster than me. If, we're, if you and I are running a 100-meter sprint and you're averaging a way faster time and then we show up to the race together, like letting – all that extra stuff slows you down, right? A lot of times mm -hmm. we create uh, hate in our own heads. You know what I mean? Like when you look at that guy and you start comparing and you're doing that, you go down this avenue, you haven't even talked to the person. And then all of a sudden you start comparing, you don't like the way that he looks or something, or he, you think he looks better than you. Now you're just like wiring hate in your own head, has nothing to, you know what I mean? So we can create that own hate too by the comparison thing. Just stick to, like, I don't think people ever really knew what that meant when you're saying, like, swim your own race or run your own race or whatever. It's literally just, like, you're doing what you do best, and you know how to do that. Just do that. Just keep it real simple and just do that. But most people, I don't think, know themselves, and they don't know where they operate best. Like you said, that's where the comparison comes. That's when the hate can come in and affect us. People need to focus on where they do things right the most and try and do that. And then, like you said, when you develop yourself, Look at those other areas to get out of your comfort zone. But when you're racing, you got to stay in your zone. You got to stay in your lane. You got to do what you do best, man. Haters are not, dude. Haters can either get out of my way, Corey, or they can help me. The only time I'm hating on anybody is that they get on me for having my donuts, man. I want my donuts. If you hate on me for my donuts, dude, I ain't got time for you, you know? You eating donuts, man? What is Not this? right now. Not right now. I thought this was a health thing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I hear you. It's, um, yeah. It's a powerful topic, man, because you can, it can go so many different ways, right? But tr I think trusting that, that game plan and coming up with your game plan is really where it should really all start. And the, the better you can start executing on your game plan – just being you and doing all that, the more successful you're going to be. Yes, there's going to be some hate thrown your way throughout, but you can pick and choose what you listen to. Yeah. That's, that's really, I think, the big takeaway is you don't have to listen to all the, the negative negativity out there. You can create your own positivity. You can use that negative remark to help fuel you. You know, best thing that ever happened to me i was told i was too slow by a bajillion schools when i was looking to swim in college what did that do became my phone background it gave motivation to to go out and get better yeah. you know yes I, I know plenty of people with you probably have similar stories to that from the baseball days you know what i mean absolutely dude that's what i'm saying like you can use hate. hate hate is not it's just like we're talking about all these other topics like things that seem negative can be very helpful at the right time and know how to use it. I was the same way. I love doing that stuff when 
when people would shut me down, I took a recruiting trip. The school told me to go, uh, I think it was Ryder University. It was like north a little bit. It was like a four and a half hour mm -hmm. drive. Coach told me to come up, tour the school, work with them. For four and a half hours, my parents up there, walk across the basketball floor. He walks across, gave me a handshake. He goes, actually, we decided to go in another direction. But go ahead and go ahead and uh, tour the school if you want to take a look. And then walked right back. And then I was like, huh, four and a half hour drive. I could either in that moment, right, like just shut down and go like, I just drove four and a half hours up here to have about a two and a half minute conversation with the coach, drive four and a half hours home and then never play baseball again. Or I can view that situation like that wasn't a hateful thing on his end. I took it as hate. I took it as this dude just wasted my mm. time and I got pissed. But then like, like you did, you turn it into that background on your phone. You turn it into something that you can use to motivate you to go down. But I knew I wanted to play baseball. I knew 100% I was passionate about doing it. That's why that helped me. I think it doesn't help you when people are questioning what they're doing. You know, if you're the whole time going like, I don't know if I want to swim. And then that happens to you. Then you're like, you let it in and you let it stop you. But you knew you wanted to swim. I knew I wanted to play baseball. I know I like to lift. I know I like to have this good stuff. I know I'm starting to learn my boundaries. When you know your boundaries of what you do good, what you do bad, you can avoid or use hate into thrive. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people are just like we were saying, wearing the wrong Halloween costume to the party. They feel insecure and they don't trust what they want to do going into it. That's a problem and issue because then you're susceptible to all that stuff, man. So you got to be, you got to be confident within yourself and your abilities for sure, man. You have to. I love it. I love it, man. It's, you know, I I hope you got a chance. Did you ever play against Ryder? No, and, nope, nope, I did not. Man, yeah. The the best feeling for me, and you know, it wasn't a feeling of revenge. It was just more of a feeling of like I felt it, I made up the story to be bigger than it was. Right, like same thing happened to me with East Carolina and Pitt. Both of them told me they were too. I was too slow. Pitt told me I was too slow for even a trip out there. A free trip i wanted to see the, the school they said don't even bother uh ecu brought me down unfortunately i had the whole i had the whole trip experience um yeah, yeah. but still same thing they were like no scholarship dollars and fortunately i had opportunities to swim against both schools during my college career and uh safe to say i was faster than the kids that they had in my events the times that we competed against one another so it's kind of cool when you're able to f use that fuel and then years down the road show. Yeah. And it was more in my head, right? Like a hundred percent ECU's coaches and Pitt's coaches had probably no idea that, you know, didn't remember any of that. So we tell our stories, ourselves, these stories to motivate us. And sometimes we make them a bigger deal in our own head than they actually are in, yeah. in reality too. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, man. You can't, you can't start creating in your head, whether it's hateful towards someone or don't start creating in your head that that person is being hateful towards me. That's why I've just decided, like I said at the beginning, that's why I don't hold anything against people. I don't, even if someone is being hateful towards me, like for whatever is going on in their life, whatever they're dealing with that has caused them to be there. I'm just like, that's, you know, maybe they had a rough upbringing. It's not their mm -hmm. fault, whatever. It just doesn't affect me because I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, and then choose to use this fuel or not get it out of your way, right? No, it's the right time to have a conversation, call somebody out on something. Sometimes when it's something you can't avoid, you got to call someone out on it too. You know what I mean? Like you're talking about your teammates story. Yo, bro, why are you being so hateful towards me? What's the deal, man? You know, I appreciate you being competitive, but what's going on? You know, it can open up that door for conversation, but man, I'll tell you what, these Thursdays, if, is there anything that gets you fired up more than talking about a conversation? about haters something that's made you thrive over and over again Corey, what do you got to say to the people to wrap this thing up if you had to wrap up the hater yeah. in one sentence man i would say no that one understand where the hate's coming from two know that it's never going to be permanent it's a long-term play always forever and it but it will always be long term be patient with it they might hate on you now but you know, the saying, like, <laughs> when you're successful, they're going to be the first ones, you know, knocking at your door saying, like, yeah, I knew, I knew Lane was going to be big, you know, one of these days. Um, so just, like, don't, don't read too much into it. 
you know, be open to understanding where it's from, but don't, at the end of the day, it's not permanent. It's not a, a label of who you are. And yep. if you can get firm on that, like you're in a good spot. What about you? Anything else you want to add? No, I like that, man. I would just say the same thing. I would just say like, hate, like I put in the story, haters going to hate, like those people are going to be the way they want to be pretty much. And it's all about how you choose to interact with that. You know, how you choose to let it affect you. It's all on you. You're in complete control of letting the hate come in and be negative towards you and bum you out. Or you can ignore it and focus on yourself and focus on how you're adapting and moving forward and just know who you are and have that clarity we were talking about. And then that'll make everything a lot easier because if it's not in alignment with that shit, Corey, if it's not in alignment with my shit, it might be a kick rocks. Thing. Yep. Might be a deuces, see you later kind of thing, man. It might be peace out. We ain't got time for that. Real quick. Yeah. What, what are you going to be for Halloween, bro? Dude, Curious now. Cool. You're talking about all these costumes. You got to have some idea. What's I'm your never, costume? You know, Dan, Dan's been hitting me big on trying to do the uh, Top Gun scene when they're playing volleyball, man. I might have to get some jean shorts and some uh, baby oil and just start rubbing it around, play some volleyball. <laughs> but you, I you love it. One? I love it. Yeah, one big one. Um, I'm not sure yet. I am not sure. I need to decide. I'm going to be out in California next week for it, actually. So Ooh, nice. Maybe, maybe a surfer, bro. Get, get some puka shell necklaces going, uh, Make that hang out in Malibu and uh, catch some waves, bro. I don't know. We'll see. My goodness. No, I we'll love see, it, man. my man. All right, brother. Lane. I appreciate your time, man. Bless up. I appreciate you, dude. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you, dude. How are we going, buddy?